Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our latest New York City Builds Bio Plus webinar. And once again, my name is Mitch Simpler and my day job is serving as a mechanical partner and as the managing partner emeritus to Jarrah Stam and Bowles Consulting Engineer. <clears throat> Today's webinar will focus on New York City's continued investment in new life science projects, and mainly the specific fact that the New York City Economic Development Company has invested an additional $38 million into new biotech centers. Once again, at New York City BioPlus, our mission today and every day is to promote and shine the light on the life science real estate industry in New York. Our hope is that you will feel as strongly as we do that the life science industry in New York is poised for rapid growth, but constrained by lack of available affordable laboratory space. Once again, I would like to personally th take this time to thank all of our sponsors, our virtual exhibitors and our media partners, all of whom will be spotlighted later in this morning's presentation and without whom we simply would not be able to have this webinar. I'd also like to personally thank all of our panelists, moderators and presenters for their time and for sharing their valuable insights in this incredible and exploding industry. And finally, a huge thank you for all of you, our members and guests for taking your valuable time and energy for hearing our story. It is now my honor and my privilege to once again introduce Ms. Nancy Kelly. Thank you, Mitch, and hello, everyone. I'm so excited uh, to welcome all of you to NYC Builds Bio's first webinar in 2021 entitled New Life Science Investment Continues, New York City Invests $38 million in New Biotech Centers. My name is Nancy Kelly and I serve on the steering committee and as a founding member of NYC Builds Bio. And I would like also to acknowledge and thank the New York City EDC and the New York institutions who join us this afternoon, Albert Einstein Medical College of Medicine, Columbia University, New York Stem Cell Foundation and Rockefeller University all of whom are building a solid foundation for the New York City life science cluster. And of course, the founding and corporate members of NYC Builds Bio, uh, who make all of our programming possible. Since the announcement of, uh, by the New York City Economic Development Corporation of its $500 million initiative to propel New York City's life science sector, into the top ranks of life science centers across the country, everyone has been watching as new investments were made in New York City's workforce and lab infrastructure and waiting to see what would come next. This morning, or this afternoon rather, we're pleased to host the NYC EDC and the four New York City institutions who will tell you about the most recent investments designed to advance translational research efforts and grow the biotech ecosystem in New York City. So welcome to all of you and thanks for joining us today. This webinar is part of an ongoing series of online events hosted by NYC Builds Bio Plus. You can view the series on the events page on our website and we hope you will register for future monthly webinars to be announced, as well as our new monthly member spotlight and networking series, which will start next Thursday, March 4th at one o'clock, spotlighting Hunter Roberts Construction Group. We are also planning monthly virtual tours of the developments happening in subclusters throughout New York City, commencing in March with Deerfield Management's 345 Park Avenue South called The Cure. A date will be announced for this event shortly, and we hope you will join us in all of this rich programming. Now I want to introduce Carlo Ubianco, Vice President of Life Sciences at the New York City Economic Development Corporation, who will introduce his colleague, Elsie Yao, and our panelists this afternoon. During Carlo's five plus year tenure with NYC EDC, he has been part of the team that developed the LifeSci NYC 10 year initiative and currently remains instrumental to the plan's implementation. His past and current portfolio of life sciences programs include city capital projects like the ones highlighted today, as well as investments into early stage companies workforce development programs, land use initiatives, 
and regional economic development. He also serves as a strategic advisor on real estate and financial incentive transactions under LifeSci NYC. In the last year during the pandemic, he was a core contributor to many of NYC EDC's COVID response efforts, including the public-private partnership with local life sciences company Opentrons to establish the pandemic response lab, as well as the public-private partnership between NYC EDC and New Lab in the Brooklyn Navy Yard to design and build ventilators. Dr. Uvienko is a chemical and biomedical engineer by training, marked by 10 plus years of academic and industrial experience prior to the NYC EDC. He is the author of numerous publications in the field of protein science and the holder of several biotechnology patents. But most importantly, Dr. Uvienko is born and raised citizen of New York City. Thank you, Carlo. Before we begin, I just wanted to cover a few administrative details. There's a program in PowerPoint highlighting the hosts and speakers for this meeting, and these will be posted on the NYC Builds Bio website after the meeting. The program is being recorded and will be distributed to all registrants after the meeting. If you are having technical difficulties accessing the Zoom room or other issues, please email info at nycbuildsbio.org or send a notice through the chat button at the bottom of your screen. And since most of you are participating in listen only mode, please feel free to submit your questions via the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. We will open up for discussion and Q&A at the end of the program and will address as many audience questions as possible. At the end of the meeting, we will also have a chance for smaller randomized groups to meet in separate rooms with our speakers where you can open your videos and microphones to talk to each other. You can stay as long as you would like to get to know each other and share stories. So now I'll open it up to Carlo. Great, thank you, Nancy. And thank you for the kind introduction. Um, Hopefully that's all you'll have to hear about me and maybe the EDC the rest of the time. Today is all about our four um, illustrious awards that we recently made uh, with City Capital under LifeSci NYC. So um, that's <laughs> enough about me. I'd like to introduce my colleague at the EDC, Elsie Yao, who is an AVP with our team at Life Sciences and also uh, an early colleague on the City Capital Program, which includes these projects as well as um, the, the other initiatives that in, in pertain to life, uh, real estate and city capital. So um, Elsie, thank you again for joining us and I'll hand it to you in a, in a minute. But before I do, um, I wanted to take this opportunity before we get into it to describe to you the, the run of show. Today, we're going to have a journey of the development of a drug from its earliest idea and conception and how do you prosecute that as a, a piece of matter to all the way through manufacturing of that therapeutic. And these four projects, um, we feel at the EDC and are very proud for them representing sort of segments of that development process all the way through conception to um, manufacturing at the pilot scale. So that's how we're gonna divide up the day, um, starting off with Columbia University and Brent Stockwell, professor, uh, chemical biology professor in colleges of art and sciences with a very exciting project on uh, that, that will validate therapies at their earliest stage of conception, like I said. And then we will transition to a bit of a later stage development of the drug of, of a drug or a therapy um, with Tim O'Connor representing the Tri-Institutional Translational Center for Therapeutics, uh, which is uh, being operated and stood up by the Rockefeller University. And then that will transition to two exciting fields of, of development in the biologic space, stem cell therapies, and more broadly speaking, cell therapies with the New York Stem Cell Foundation and um, uh, Einstein Montefiore's exciting project. And so with that, very briefly, Brent, I'm going to start it off with you. Can you, uh, for our audience, introduce your organization and also yourself and your role within the organization in this project? Great. Yeah, it's great to be here, everyone. Thanks, Carlo, for that uh, that up. 
I'm a professor of biological sciences and chemistry at Columbia, and you know, I also am involved with the various institutes like Data Science Institute and Cancer Center and the new Irving Institute of Cancer Dynamics, which is more of a quantitative approach to understanding cancer um, and, and several other things. But here I'm, I'm heading up this effort to establish the Therapeutic Validation Center in partnership with NYC EDC and, um, and some other partners that we're working on establishing. So I'll be, I'll be helping to set this up and then eventually we'll have an executive director and I'll continue to serve on the governance council, chairing that over, you know, as we move forward. Wonderful, thank you very much. Um, and, and great to have you again, Brent. Tim, um, sort of a, one of the forefathers of this do, you know, push for building out the industry in life sciences. Um, together with some of the uh, other representatives of the TRI-I. Uh, can you introduce yourself and also uh, your institution and the role in the project? Uh, sure, Carlo. As usual, calling me a forefather, you've started by making me feel old again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Tim O'Connor. I've been at Rockefeller for eight years now. Um, I'm the executive vice president here. Um, and uh, my background is actually in biology, um, having been um, run on my own lab, as well as participated in both basic and clinical research over the years. But I've been uh, supporting science instead of doing it for some years now, uh, including my entire time at, at Rockefeller. Um, so Rockefeller is um, a small uh, biological research institution. So we are a university, we, but we only have uh, graduate students uh, in the life sciences. Uh, we don't have an English department. We don't have a football team. Uh, it's not so. It's not a university in that sense. Um, but we do train the next generation of scientists, as well as focus on our mission, which has been a consistent, singular mission since our founding in 1901, and that is science for the benefit of humanity. Um, I th like to think we punch above our weight. We're a small institution with about 70 labs, um, but in our history, we've run won 26 Nobel prizes, um, including. Uh, six in the last 20 years. So it's a, it's a, it's a very, um, out, it's just an outstanding faculty here uh, doing great science. And it's my privilege to be able to be here and support it. Um, I'll just end by noting our, our geography on the Upper East Side because it's important to the project is that at, at 68th and York Avenue, we actually literally share a street corner with Memorial Sloan Kettering and Wild Cornell Medicine, uh, which, led, which, which will lead into later my description of why this is a tri-institutional effort that we're, we're, we're endeavoring. Thanks, Carlo. Fantastic. Thanks, Tim. Rick, um, can you introduce yourself, the New York Stem Cell Foundation, and, uh, and also your role in the foundation? I think that it, it, you bring a particularly unique perspective given your background, and maybe you can touch a little bit on that. Sure, sure. Thanks, Carlo. And uh, thanks for having me today. And especially thanks for the award. It means a lot to us. Um, so I'm Rick Monson. I'm Senior VP Scientific Operations at the New York Stem Cell Foundation Research Institute. Um, I've been with NYSA for about four years. Before that, I spent um, over 20 years in pharma industry and preclinical drug discovery, initially with Sharon Plow and then with Merck, and uh, then was able to transition out and, and join NYSA, which is, I guess, the small kid on the block here but trying to hold down the west side. Um, our uh, labs and offices are located on uh, West 54th Street between 11th and 12th Avenues. And we're a unique foundation in that, um, well, we were established in 2005, so we've been here for 15 years surviving as a nonprofit. And we're unique in that we support external researchers as well as have our own internal research efforts um, and laboratories in, on the west side. Um, with about 70 researchers on the ground and about 100, a little over 100 employees overall. And we do a mixture, again, of external support and a lot of communications um, with uh, events, both for scientific community. Um, we, we have an annual conference that we held, hold normally at Rockefeller, though going virtual uh, this year and last year. Um, but as well, a lot of events for the lay community to educate them about diseases and stem cells and, and et cetera. So. Yeah, I'll leave it. Great. Thanks, Rick. And uh, last but not least, Harris.